They play armchair psychologists, so I'm going to play armchair psychologists. Please just, do. Just like I did with uh, uh, Selkie. With everyone. <laughs> with, we've... with everyone. I, I uh, pull out my armchair psychologist and try to diagnose them. Mm. Uh, well, Selkie was definitely schizoaffective. <laughs> 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 and uh, these guys are probably autistic or on the spectrum. <laughs> I don't know if they're autistic. I just think they're... In order to have a healthy adult relationship mm. with another person, a romantic relationship, you need to be willing to make yourself vulnerable. Yes. And to me, it seems that Either they've never been able to make themselves vulnerable, they just, mm. they just haven't reached that level of emotional maturity, or they at one stage could and got hurt in a relationship. And well, they're so they're divorced, right? Yeah, so. their, their terror at being hurt emotionally again is preventing them from being able to maintain a meaningful romantic relationship yeah. with another human being. That's my... I don't think it's pathological. I think they're just emotionally stunted. Yes. So, okay, I'm going to take off the feint. <laughs> I'm just, I call it just that for a second. And, uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would agree. I, you know, like in the episode uh, on Solanus, well, I mean, with Solanus, it's extremely obvious because she, she was probably raped as a yeah. child. But she, uh, her views on gender and stuff are shaped strongly by her trauma. Um, and that comes through very strongly in the text. Um, there's definitely moments in this book where you can kind of feel the resentment or the you can kind of feel the resentment, but but it's just this, a, a, a burning of sun of resentment. <laughs> yeah, and and I and it's n- no surprise that these men had a history of tumultuous relationships. However. That is not a sufficient reason, <laughs> I think, because it's like that, uh, you know, this idea that, oh, yeah, uh, all, all bullies were bullied mm. or, uh, but not, I don't know if that's the case, but just go along with the fucking line of thought. Okay. Some people might say like, oh, yeah, well, this bully bullies, this person bullies these other people. Well, they were probably bullied when in some other context. Mm. It's like, sure, but not all people who are bullied turns in, turn into bullies. So y- you can't just completely obviate yeah, the person's there's something responsibility else going on. for their own actions. And part of that is that that person is making the choice to be a bully. Mm-hmm. And other people who were abused or bullied didn't respond like that to that stimulus. And so these men have had some pretty nasty relationship experiences by the sounds of it. And they translated that into this weird hogwash pseudoscience <laughs> and turned it into this horrible book to sort of, I think, retroactively justify their own positions in their divorces. And, and But other men who have had, you know, unfortunate endings to their relationships haven't done, haven't turned into these resentful little spiders. So... I don't think it's yeah. sufficient justification. No, I think there's there was the stimulus of a bad relationship and for whatever reason they've been unable to come to terms with yeah. an unpleasant experience. And instead of what I would consider the emotionally healthy response of grieving and then being willing to be vulnerable again with someone else. Yeah. They've just They've not only completely walled themselves up, but erected this bizarre intellectual ed- edifice to justify why it was her fault. Yes. Yeah. And and the, the other thing on the emotional vulnerability thing is that uh, some people would write, I, well, would make an argument that a lot of people, a lot of men... Uh, probably regardless of the culture, but in, in, in the context of Australian culture or maybe you could say more broadly like Western culture in Western industrialized countries, like men are uh, emotionally, not good at being emotionally vulnerable, mm. um, which is fine. Like that's probably the case compared to women or whatever. Uh, there's a whole bunch of conversation 
uh, probably in the last like 10 years around mental health, but then also more specifically male mental health and all that sort of stuff, yeah, like being vulnerable. And um, yeah, these these dudes, not once in this book did they ever talk about... Oh, well, they talk about opening up, but then that's part of the beta-ization process. So yeah, they you don't want to do that. You're you don't discouraged. Want to because then you'll become her male girlfriend yeah that's how she gets you yeah that, and so they're literally saying like no don't have an emotionally open relationship with your long-term partner what much of this book seems to be advocating for is basically how to turn any relationship you have into a time bomb like <laughs> don't listen to what she's saying to you <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're telling you what she means. What she really means. Yeah. She yeah, doesn't have your best interests at heart. communication. So your best bet is just to manipulate her and undermine oh. her self-confidence so she won't leave you. At the same time, her, her request for communication, and we'll get into the five stages of female manipulation and why the, the request to communicate is actually really bad. Yes. A, a sinister the, sign. A sinister sign. The, so why, why you shouldn't communicate with her. They also talk about why you shouldn't let her get interested in your hobbies. Yeah. Oh, or your that's friends. Such good that's such a good book. No, we'll leave that for later. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into in. it. But basically, this is just a blueprint for a fucking time bomb. Just this is, a, a nuclear meltdown. If you want to know how not to have a fucking healthy relationship, <laughs> you, you should follow this book. This is a... Recipe for fucking disaster. So, so <laughs> there's just, just a Chernobyl in waiting.